Hey, hi, it's Derek Jordan. Welcome to the World Fusion Show, where we bring you the leading innovators in world fusion music. Today, I am delighted to be presenting Arco Musical, which is a group of six bearing bow players, and they sing at the same time. We are joined today by two of the members, Gregory Bear, uh, Gregory Beyer, and Rachel Taylor, um, who are part of the group. And I just want to say welcome, Arco Musical, to the World Fusion Show. Hey guys, how are you doing today? Hey, we're well. You're doing Thank well. You so yeah, thank you so much for having us on your show today, Derek. It's been a real, it's been a long time coming, and we're really thrilled to be here. Well, it's a true pleasure of mine to present true innovators in this music. I mean, it's so cool. And there you are in your studio, surrounded by your bearing boughs. And I just wanted to, first of all, ask you guys to demonstrate the bearing bow and to talk a little bit about this instrument, which most people never heard of. Sure, we'd be happy to do that. The Baron Bajo is one member of a really large family of instruments just known as musical bows, and they hail from throughout Southern Africa. They're known by many names in Africa. Ungu, Mbu, uh, Mbumba, those are names from Angola. Shitende is a popular instrument in, uh, in Mozambique, in South Africa. The Zulu bow that's most similar to the Baron Bajo is called Makwiana, um, and so on. And, and so, uh, one of the things that's really so let's just describe the the instrument as you had suggested the musical bow is not unlike the hunting bow there's they have a sort of a you know, it's not exactly clear what the historical relationship is among them but there are cave paintings of people playing musical bows that date back thousands of years um the musical bow as it exists in this fashion this is uh, this is a, a gourd resonated musical bow there are other musical bows that are resonated with the mouth, it, with uh, little holes in the ground. Any kind of cavity that creates resonance allows for a musical bow's string to vibrate more clearly to make a musical sound that's pleasing for the for the uh, the performer and for maybe a small audience. Um, the Vienna bow is constructed very simply. It's, there's a staff uh, that's called a verga in Portuguese. Um, the gourd is called a cabaça. This is the cavalete or the corda that, that is that creates a bridge, a ponche that divides the wire into two different parts. And um, and then on, on our particular instruments, uh, which is a slight uh, modernization of the of this of the of the birnbau, we have a, a bass tuning peg on this end that allows us to fine tune the instruments. And for the music that we play, that's 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 a crucial element of the of, of the instrument itself. So. The gourd, wherever it's placed along the length of the instrument, um, matters because it divides the wire into these two, two different parts that creates a musical um, uh, interval, as it were. On a binimbao um, from Brazil, in the capoeira context, the gourd is invariably uh, located down towards the bottom of the instrument. And so, but but with an instrument like the Shitende from, from Mozambique, uh, the, and also the Umakwiana from South Africa, those instruments position the gourd much closer to the center like this instrument that I, that I have here. Um, the particular ratio that we've, cho that we've located this gourd at is five to four, and the musical interval that results is a major third. And in this tuning, we're a lot, we, we can create musical melodies as a result. Rachel's instrument, by contrast, the tuning is at a three to one. Which do you have? Two to one. Ah, she has a two to one instrument right now. And that creates a, the interval of an octave. Great. So when, when we put the, our two instruments together, we can create melodies that inter interlock. to stop the wire to create further notes still, we have a coin that we use in Portuguese, it's called a moeda. And it's just a big, thick piece of brass that is heavy enough to create an impact on the wire to allow for different pitches and also different timbres to, to come about. So I can play do and mi, but I can stop the wire here and play a note in between. When the 
coin is laid lightly against the wire, you can also create a buzzing sound. In the game of Capoeira, it's known as chiado or shepa. Sounds not unlike a snare drum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, also, I understand uh, in traditional Brazilian, well, when they use the bearing bow, they also often have a shaker in the, the stick hand as well. And I know you guys do that sometimes. We do, yeah. Not all the time in our music, but there are moments when we specifically want to reference the capoeira tradition where we use the, where we use the kashishi amply. Yeah. Would you like to see that too? Well, you know, the capoeira is again probably something that our listeners don't know much about. Could you quickly explain? Because that's where the berimbau is mostly utilized in Brazilian music. Sure. Uh, let me actually grab an instrument that's tuned like a berimbau. Okay. So, as I mentioned, in that capoeira tradition, the bit and bow is tuned with the gourd much lower on the instrument. Right. This is, this is. This is a special painting. I'm I'd say this. Halloween style. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, uh, so this is a traditional toki of capoeira. It's called tokiangola. Yeah. Working as well. Sure. Now, what our listeners may not know is that capoeira is a Brazilian martial art. And um, it's also, they talk about play. It's done in a playful way, but it's also serious martial art at the same time. So, um, and I've seen it a lot uh, and I've never taken it or practiced it. Have you guys either, have you practiced capoeira? Yeah. Um, in, from 2015 to 2016, uh, I took a sabbatical from Northern Illinois University, where I'm the director of percussion studies here. And uh, I, I also was awarded a Fulbright Scholar Grant. And with that grant, I was invited to uh, teach percussion and also a special seminar on musical bows at the Federal University of Minas Gerais in Belo Horizonte, Brazil. And while I was there, and I ended up staying for eight months, and while I was there, uh, I trained capoeira. That was part of my research prop. That was the research element of the, of yeah. the Fulbright work. Um, and I trained with a wonderful uh, uh, mestre uh, named Alcione Oliveira. And she runs uh, her own school of capoeira now. It's called uh, Group Candeia de Capoeira Angola. And uh, it's in a beautiful location in Floresta, in the, in the neighborhood of Floresta in in Belo Horizonte. Um, I'd love to go to our first video now. Sure. So um, this is a piece of yours, Greg. Can you want to say something about it? I'd be happy to. Uh, this piece is called uh, Birba Sextet Number Two, and its subtitle is Traiera. Um, this piece is on our second album, <clears throat> Spinning in the Wheel, and we released that this past March uh, on the National Sawdust Tracks in Brooklyn, New York. Okay, let's go to the video right now. Yeah. 
eu tava em casa O meu bem sem pensar, sem imaginar Quando bateram na porta O meu bem salvo, mamãe, vou chamar Para ajudar a vencer O meu bem a guerra com o Paraguai Santa Maria Wow, fantastic. I just think that's so beautiful. Such such truly wonderful stuff. Um, Rachel, I wanted to just um, ask you about your attraction to the Berimbau and how you got interested in this music. I got interested in this music because I started my master's degree at Northern Illinois University. And I, of course, did not know this instrument existed by any means before I came here. And um, Greg has been studying this instrument for decades. And so... Um, he introduces this instrument to all of his students. And I just happened to be at the right place at the right time in the sense that they needed somebody to play in the group and I was interested in playing. And one of the most beautiful things about the instrument is that you can feel the vibrations against your body because the gourd opens against your stomach. That's right. And you can create a vibrato. So it's almost like your, your body is part of the instrument because it helps close that circuit, you know? Right. And, um, those vibrations are really beautiful, and it just feels like it's singing. The instrument sings, yeah. so it's there's it's really hard to not be drawn to right. that. You get kind of a natural wah wah effect, you know, with the gourd. It's really cool. So that's because they're moving it back and forth. Yeah. yeah. How did you guys get started? What was the genesis of this group? Well. So as Rachel just mentioned, I've been studying this instrument since the, the end of the last millennium. Um, it fell into my life in a really beautiful way. Uh, I was at Drummer's World in New York City where I was doing uh, graduate work at the time, Manhattan School of Music, and I was just minding my own business in the store. And it's, it's worth pointing out that Drummer's World was like this mecca. It was on 46th Street, which is like little little Brazil way. Yeah, I, kn I know it well. <laughs> you, you do, yeah. I would imagine many of your listeners probably do if they've been to New York. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, it's not there anymore, but they still have an online presence. But Barry, the, the owner of the place, was just this wonderful person that everyone loved. He was he was a real beloved uh, you know, personality in our, in our community. And, you know, drummer's world was this kind of mecca where people would come from all over the world to sell and trade instruments and pick up whatever they needed and just stop by and talk to people. So you learned a lot going there. Then at any rate, <clears throat> I was there and I was just kind of minding my own business. And I heard this amazing sound coming from the back of the shop. And I, and I went back there to see what was going on. And this gentleman was playing bit about with an incredibly virtuosic flair. And I politely waited and just kind of stared at him, you know, it was really absorbing what he was doing. And when he stopped playing, he said to me, oh, if there's one record that would really, you know, turn you on to this instrument, what it does, it's Saudades Banana Vasconcelos. So I immediately left the store after thanking him. And I went to Tri Tower Records, which was, you know, still there in the day. Yeah. And, uh, and I found the record and I got on the subway, went home, put it on my CD player. And my jaw just hit the floor with the beauty of the, of the sound. So as is my want, I just started transcribing it. Yeah. Um, I didn't have an instrument, but I kind of knew more or less how it worked. And I mm. was transcribing what I was hearing. Like, kid you not, like a week later, um, I got a phone call from a Brazilian singer songwriter that I had already done a few you know, back like party gigs and stuff like that with. And he's like, hey, Greg, you got to come over to my house. We have to rehearse. We have some gigs coming up. I just got back from Brazil. I was there on vacation with my family. It was wonderful. Had a great time. Uh, but hey, I, and listen, just come come on over. By the way, I, I brought you something back from Brazil. And so I, I drove my car up to Danbury, Connecticut, where he lived at the time. And I, I came in and he got this big smile on his face and he ran up a staircase and came back down. And lo and behold, he handed me my first bit about. <laughs> and that, that just happened in such a short period of time that I, you know, immediately started asking the teachers that I was studying with at the time who didn't play band about, hey, who do you know in the city that can that can teach me? I, I need a teacher for this instrument. And they everyone said unanimously, 
you have to go see Cabello, Mes Cabello. And Cabello uh, was living in New York City at the time with his wife, Chisa. And, um, and I went down and he, yeah, everyone, he, he, in addition to being an incredible capoeirista, he's also a trained musician and percussionist and was doing a lot of folkloric shows in the city and, and around the country and that. And it turns out that he was an incredible teacher. He had, a, he had an ex, just a real precise way of explaining the proper technique, how to get good sounds. He was patient. You know, he was kind. Um, he showed me exactly how to... He, he was all about sound production. Like, you have to get good sounds to play the instrument well. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, I took my transcription down to him of, of Nanavas Gonzalez. And, and at the end of the lesson, you know, I showed it to him and he's like, hmm, what is that? You know, and, and what... I immediately understood he didn't doesn't read music, even though he's this incredible player. So I, I vowed to myself I, I was going to memorize the transcription, go back for a second lesson, and show him you know what what I could do. So I did that, and he got this big smile on his face, and he was like, "Wow, you know, you've, you've learned really quickly. That's pretty great." I, of course, I know that that's not a best and sailors. And then his smile slowly started to fade, and he said, "But Greg." You're not none of us on sailors, <laughs> and you're never going to be none of us on sailors. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and at the time, I, I wasn't training capoeira, so he, which he knew, and he was like, "And you're not a capoeira, so you're not coming from the tradition." Right. So, what are you going to do with this instrument yeah. that can give something back to the world that will be different? And I was like a little crestfallen because I was like, "You don't understand. I want to be none of us on sailors." No, well, <laughs> yeah, sure, yeah. of course. <laughs> But, you know, when the emotional wave sort of passed, I understood that he was actually being incredibly kind and inspiring. He was challenging me to That's do right. something different. And because I was, I was studying a lot of contemporary classical music at the time, I was studying with Steve Schick, among other people at the Manhattan School of Music. I was already in this process of in this world of, of collaborating with composers to, you know, to write you know, to write different pieces for, say, a drum set or a multiple percussion setup or a keyboard instrument or whatever. Um, so I just immediately thought, oh, I could ask someone to write me a Berenbaum piece. And I got really lucky because the first piece that uh, that I asked uh, someone to to uh, to write uh, to write for me turned out to be just this incredibly lovely piece that's still to my to this day one of my favorite pieces. It's called Just Visiting uh, by a friend of mine, a colleague of mine who was at the Manhattan School of the Music at, at, at the same time that I was, named Andy Noble. And uh, the, as I, uh, ironically and interestingly, even though I didn't ask for this uh, explicitly, he wrote effectively a sextet. Um, he wrote, he, he, I went and recorded all the six, all six parts, yeah. and then we extracted the sixth part. And when I would go perform the piece, I would play the sixth part right. live, and it was this stereophonic thing, real, real minimal kind of texture, but absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. And um, so, that even though I, I didn't have the the intention of creating a sextet like Arco Musical back then, um, it, the the first seed was already sort of planted. It was like this meant to be kind of thing. Right. Everyone in Capoeira who is truly a Capoeira has an has an incredible sense of their of of the history and the, the sort of lineage of of, of their practice. Yeah. Um, and ancestrality is a really important fundamental concept in in Capoeira, and so they named their their school the Bahaka. Yeah. Jangola is beautiful space, and you know, at he set up a community concert for us um, while we were there, and I was able to tell him, hey, Master, did you remember you, nearly two decades ago you you challenged me by asking what I could give to the world that could be different with this instrument? I finally have an answer for you. Yeah, and I'd like to present this music to you. Beautiful. It so was a special kind of full circle moment. That's so great. Thank you. We're going to go to our second video now, okay? So, do you want to say something quickly about it? Yeah, so um, this is called Undula Sound, which literally means undulations or waves. And this is the newest trio, also on our latest record. Um, and it's by Alexis, Alexis Lamb, the, the, the co-founder of, of Arkham Musical. Yeah. She's an incredible composer, and yeah. this is a really beautiful piece. All right, let's go to the video right now. Thank you.
All right, we are back with Arco Musical. That's just fantastic. So, um, Rachel, I wanted to ask you about school programs that you guys are doing now. I know you're very involved with that. Yes, so we have these educational outreach programs that we run for middle schoolers, high schoolers, and we also do college residencies. And we have a couple of different programs that we do, but our favorite program we named Volta al Mundo, which is kind of just like around the world. And we create these stations for students to go and experience the Berenbao in, in a couple of different ways and also experience capoeira. We want them to get a hands-on experience with the instrument yeah. because it just you can feel the connection instantly and it doesn't really take a whole lot of like you can play the instrument immediately almost right so it's really fun to get an instrument in kids hands and just get them playing so that they have an appreciation for what they see us doing too and then um we also put it in context of the capoeira tradition so there's a station where they learn they like sit in the bateria which is where we have all the different instruments that would be in a typical traditional cap capoeira bateria and then um, they also might learn some tokis or some capoeira rhythms um, they get an introduction to like some basic movements that might happen in the game of capoeira so like the physical dance martial art of it uh, and then we even teach them some songs too some portuguese so um and we introduce this to them as a way to be like this is something that happens in another culture let's have some appreciation for what other people do and um it's just a lot of fun. And uh, the other thing that we do, and especially in college residencies, is something called the Art Musical Composer Initiative, which um, just is an open line of communication between us as an ensemble and a composer to try and workshop a piece with a composer. So they're getting the most educational experience from working with us. So there's a lot of back and forth. They don't just give us a piece and we play it. It's they give us a piece, we work on it as best we can, and then we give them feedback about how they can get even better. Cool. Very good. I want to go to our third video right now. So do you want to say something about that? This next piece is the, was really the foundation, the anchor of, of our new album, Spinning in the Wheel. Uh, the piece is called Hoda. It's written by a friend, uh, a colleague of ours who lives in New York City, Elliot Cole. Let's go to the video now.
Yes, we are back with Arco Musical. Um, I just want to say thank you guys so much for joining us today on the World Fusion Show. Gregory, Byer, and Rachel Taylor for your group, Arco Musical. Thank you, Derek. It's really been a pleasure to talk to you. Thanks for letting us be a part of your community and share the things that we're so passionate about with, with everyone. Well, I'm sure our audience is going to be have their ears greatly opened by what they heard on this show today. Thanks so much. So, hey, this is Derek Jordan. Thank you for joining us today on the World Fusion Show. It's been great to have you. And, you know, we've got lots more amazing shows with fabulous musicians coming up in the near future. Please stay tuned. And also, you know, I want to thank our sponsors, Mackenzie Family Charitable Trust and Dean's Beans for their support. It's wonderful. And remember, as we always say on the show, think globally, listen locally, and support independent music. Thank you.